Hello, it's Maxine. <laughs> my hair on my lip. I just saw a beautiful sunset over in Sydney, BC on Vancouver Island. I'll include a little clip of it in my video. So lately I've been hooked on um, answering Jubilee's, Jubilee is Jubilee Media. <laughs> just said it like three, four times in a row. Jubilee Media has their own channel on YouTube and I don't know everything they do, but I just know that they have a lot of questions and discussions amongst different groups and communities of people and including disabled. So I've just really been enjoying kind of like answering their questions, like as if I had been a part of the discussion that day, just to give people a different perspective. Um, from someone who's been diagnosed late in life with autism as well as other things and was officially given my disability like persons persons with disability status in Canada which um is a huge relief because um I've been struggling with everything from education relationships um my own self-worth and so much I can't even begin to explain <laughs> in every area of my life since I was young um and finally like just in the last couple of years I really like began to become my an advocate for myself that I needed because um just the help and support that I needed growing up just wasn't going to be there so to finally know myself has been incredibly helpful and healing in not like taking off some of the blame and guilt and shame that I've experienced since I was a child so um yeah and you know with it comes a price and it's like really ridiculous that not everybody has the luxury of getting properly diagnosed because <clears throat> it's like it's um there's fees with it um if you've moved around or if you don't have a good family doctor it's almost next to impossible to like but um Thankfully, in Victoria, there's certain clinics that offer, offer like, one-on-one -on -one support with the social worker, or, um, social worker, or occupational therapist, and so going to them with my information from the psychologist was all I really needed, um, but no, you have to get that filled out with the help of a doctor. Like they don't just go with the psychologist. You need to have both parts filled. So they make it really hard for people. Not to mention like when you're disabled and most of the time disabled people are struggling financially and live in poverty, they don't have an extra $2,000 lying around to go get a proper diagnosis. So it's um really really hard like I feel incredibly thankful that I was able to get mine because I would just I would not have been able to come so far in this past year and a half since all of this has happened and I feel like I really have come a long way like things aren't a hundred percent but things are heading in a good direction um and like I said just about knowing myself has is like one of the most essential things because how can you help yourself if you don't exactly know yourself and know your needs I know that there's others who have suffered just like you know that autistic people a lot of them do tend to outgrow a lot of their symptoms that they had as children that were like extremely limiting and whether it be socially and with communication and learning disabilities and
dimming just everything kind of changes you kind of get over some you might develop more you go through like um regression sometimes as well I think with unmasking that's the part that has been the most helpful but in some ways it feels like well it's kind of made me regress in some of my skills because I just don't want to be phony I want to be true to myself so it's like helpful but then it's harmful just in terms of how others see you when you're not kind of behaving and like not just behaving but like everything from turning up the charm being charismatic smiling like I just don't feel like that <laughs> like all the years I did as a server <laughs> that was like the ultimate mask one could wear I mean I in it helped lifted my spirits because there were nice people out there, but it was not meant for something like for someone like me to do. It was really harmful in a lot of ways, as I've said before. But um, <clears throat> that's just a little backstory. I always kind of will repeat the same things on occasion, just so if there's any new viewers, um, welcome and thank you for stopping by and listening. And uh, but I always want to be able to give like a little bit of a backstory about myself. So I'm definitely going to be repeating things a lot. And so um, back to Julie Media. So this next one, I don't think there's many more videos of theirs that I can really um, answer and follow along to. So I might just end up start coming up with my own um there's definitely a whole bunch of different videos I can make like everything from poverty living in a travel trailer <laughs> I haven't gone too far like I've definitely talked about CPTSD a lot but I haven't talked about my symptoms specifically so that's a video I want to do I've done fibromyalgia I've done ADHD a bit autism and so there's many more topics to come. <laughs> but this one is, do all disabled people think the same? And the first one is, I'm pretty sure I've answered this before, but I am offended by the word disabled. And you go strongly agree, agree, somewhat agree, neutral, or <laughs> I'm finally saying it right this time somewhat disagree, disagree, and strongly disagree. So for me, um, I definitely don't think so. I mean, maybe a long time ago when I was really in denial and of my limitations and I was like just trying to be like everyone else, even though I was struggling so many ways. If someone just flat out called me disabled or something, I would probably ex be extremely offended by that. But the truth of it is, is I am disabled. I'm recognized as, as a disabled person in Canada. I have mental and physical and um, neurodevelopmental disabilities. So it just is what it is. And um, there's no shame in it. Like, I didn't ask for this life. This is just who I am. And one of the many reasons I make my videos is just to like reach out, get the education out there, share my experience and hopefully offer others a sense of comfort and belonging and whether it be learning about themselves or just relating to what I share. And my video is a bit different today. I don't feel like as a hundred percent as some of my videos where I'm it's just that um, I picked a location that's pretty busy with people, so <clears throat> I'm feeling a bit shy thinking I don't want to disturb anyone. I need to start picking locations that are lo like less people-y. <laughs> it's too people-y out there. But um, yeah, so I'm offended by the word disabled. I would say strongly 
disagree and I would say but back when I was younger probably a different story and like strongly agree uh, next is this country does enough to provide for the disabled community um, absolutely not I mean thank God that there is resources out like the thing is like when you go on regular assistance you get one baseline amount like let's just say it's a thousand dollars a month to survive off of like somehow you have to pay your rent all your bills food if you have pets which are like an emotional support and like your children and give you a purpose in life they're they're expensive um like we are very lucky that they provide some but then in order to get disabled, which provides a little bit more income a month, you have to go through all these steps and you have to pay like up to $2,000 sometimes if you want to get seen by a psychologist, especially. And like things like that just shouldn't cost. I mean... It makes a lot more sense for them not to charge because it's like what um I don't know it's just really complicated but like I'm incredibly thankful but when it comes to like does the country do enough for disabled people I don't think so I don't feel like there's this I always feel like people are raising funds for all these organizations, but where is the help? Like who is actually being helped with? And that's not really the government, but just like, you know, organizations and stuff. But it just, it, I reached out to all types of things before and oh my God, I should take a, do a video one day about like trying to kind of get in touch with like an autism support type of program before and like how I was berated by the lady on the phone and it was just like a horrible experience like there were 10 things that she kind of said and did to me that I thought was like extremely inappropriate <laughs> but um yeah there needs to be early intervention at a young age like a lot of us go missed and undiagnosed um apparently teachers are like up to here and like the their stress levels because they're taking on too many roles and so kids in school aren't getting the support they need and then there's teachers who are quitting because they just can't keep up with like they're not setting aside the funds to help people like they're burning the whatever the saying is at both ends like it's gonna be affecting the children families and the educators and it's just kind of a scary time right now when it comes to finances, like for or financial and everything, government or otherwise. Like when you go to the grocery store and you see that things are going up like 20% in one year in price, it's kind of like, it's really scary because I have two cats and two dogs and I did, I was living with my mom up until about two years ago now. And, um, you know, I just personally, I had too much resentment of the past. I had to live on my own because I used to live on my own from like 18 to 27-ish, I believe, 26, 27. And it was just way better all around for both of our well-being to not live together. But with that, I mean... I can't rehome my cats and my dogs like that would literally kill me but there are things if I didn't have them things would probably be a lot easier financially like if I was just renting a room from someone for x amount of dollars a month all included but I cannot do that like um I've been in a situation like that before where I just didn't really have a choice and it was literally almost the death of me. <sighs> but um, yes, our government needs to uh, step up and help and 
that's why like there's so many disabled people living on the streets it's not just drugs and alcohol addiction it's they're struggling mentally and they can't keep a job and then if they can't keep a job they have no place to live and it's just a really bad cycle and then maybe you make friends with the wrong people or you are just so low in your life that you do end up using drugs and alcohol to cope and it just leads to a different cycle so yeah um I have to make a video about being in extreme poverty most of my life and if I hadn't had the help from a family member at times in my life I would have been on the streets and I probably would not be here today that's just like the sad hard reality of that and I'm just and imagine like a, a white girl who's 35 like who should have all the opportunities in the world based on my skin color and all that but I <laughs> that has never been it's never felt like privilege to be a disabled person that's for sure so I can't imagine how it is for other communities the next is most people are ignorant about my disability. Well, the thing with that is I'll say somewhat agree, but I mean, even myself, I was completely ignorant to what autism even was just in, until like the past four years, roughly, including ADHD and everything. And as I was getting tests after test after test, seen, like to rule out MS and a bunch of things and having fibromyalgia I've kind of stayed ignorant about it because it's it's just a lot and this music's distracting <laughs> hmm I might have to finish my video somewhere else but um I think yeah I do get a lot of comments where people just don't understand because their perception of autism is like the child who's nonverbal or really reactive or like believe me I still get meltdowns like completely out of my control I mean I've been a lot better now but how you'll see me on video is not a full picture of what my life is day to day like all year round and struggles are sensory overload and depression at times anxiety <sighs> it's really tough but um the best thing is that in the past few years some people are against the popularity of these disabled disabilities becoming more recognized or people relating to them but it is literally helping lives and saving lives and then it's leading to awareness so that other people don't bully as much or hopefully not at all eventually and yeah because like for example I could see that like a lot of my mom's friends since I was a kid like some of them I would like probably clearly be able to pinpoint which ladies are autistic and would they know it themselves probably not but instead back then we would use like derogatory terms to like and like um i'll probably have to cut that out of my video but um yeah that's before we knew ourselves or i knew myself that's the environment i was raised in so I don't take full blame, but I'm all I can do is better now. Next is I appreciate when people offer me help. Um, well, like because I'm more able bodied, like I do live with a, a lot of chronic pain and then I have um, autism, like my disabilities are mostly invisible, so I don't get too much help, but it is nice when I start like a new job for example and some people are like understanding and recognize my differences and are willing to like ex offer an extra hand to like make sure that I'm 
understanding or getting by in what I'm doing in the beginning, especially it can be hard for me until I get a grasp of things and then I'm very like dependable, reliable and get the job done. But in the beginning, sometimes it can be challenging. So it is nice when people do offer to help and I like to, you know, offer back support when I can. There's still four questions. <laughs> Uh, dating is difficult. Yeah, I've talked, I have a whole video on that. So I'll just say strongly agree and please, and I'll put a link towards that video. Next is I felt like a burden. I think this was a question somewhere else as well that I've done, but yeah, I have felt like a burden, unfortunately. Like, I mean, not only was I bullied inside and out of the home, but um, I just feel like a lot of the blame was put on me and there wasn't a lot of acknowledgement about my parents' problems and not reaching out for the support they needed. So it was kind of like all put on me. And now I feel like a financial burden because I've needed so much help in these last recent years. Um, I've just tried to take the step to find a career that which hopefully can work like long term because I have limitations I can't just go out there and do anything so I feel like I've picked a perfect career for myself but it's just a struggle right now because I work on calls so I'm not getting the income I once had to be able to pay for like the trailer fee and the car loan and the insurance and pet food and human food and bills and rent and it's just it's lately it's becoming like really really hard next is um I would change my disability well like as much as I've struggled in life like I'm proud of who I am today and I don't think I would change that. I think there's certain things like I wish I didn't have CPTSD from childhood abuse and trauma and a number of things like in and out of the home. But I'll say, um, I don't know how I answered it the last time, but each day may be a little different, but, uh, I guess I would change it, but I would still have it. I just know that there's some people with my disabilities who are doing a lot better in life or they're thriving because they have a good support system and I just don't have that. And it's not really disability related. It's, but I am proud of myself and all I can do. So yeah, I guess it's kind of neutral. Last question is I'm living a fulfilled life. Mm. Well, I have a, a lot of amazing experiences and moving from Manitoba to a place I love in Victoria where it just has like perfect weather all year for me and beautiful sights and so much to do and I'm away from all the past toxic relationships and able to get out of the toxic cycles of situationships that I had for like literally eight years on and off things like that like getting away from those it's like memories at every corner whether it be good and bad I feel like I'm living a much more fulfilled life now that I'm back on my own um I found a career that I'm like really proud that I got even though it's just the beginning stages I'm happy and proud of myself for making these videos to hopefully help people and <laughs> I'm just extremely uncomfortable because there's like people sitting on each side of me and I didn't think that was going to happen. <sighs> but uh, yeah, I'm proud that I like am able to drive and I there's abilities I have. I feel like I'm living a pretty fulfilled life. It's just when it comes to the last thing I really have to work on is relationships, like with friendships, family, and dating. It's really tough. But yeah. Um, 
anyway, that's all. I was feeling extremely insecure because there were like two teenage girls next to me and I'm sure they could just hear me flapping my gums and talking to the camera. <laughs> anyway, um, I shouldn't like care about what people think, but I still do. That has always been a huge problem of mine. It's always been like a huge... Like, I just wish I didn't have that. Like, there's so many people who are just, they feel free. I think there's times in my life where I am free and I just don't care. And then there's other times like that where it's like performance inside me. Like, being, like, discussing important topics and having others listen in. Uh, but I doubt they really even cared. It's just something I have internally going on. Oh my god, I wish you could see what I'm seeing right now. Like, Victoria isn't as... Even around Vancouver, it's not as really populated as you think. Like, in the city, yes, but on the outside, it, there's tons of beautiful country and farm and life and nature and mountains. I just saw like a breathtaking view of Mount Baker, which is all the way in Washington. And anyways, that's all I wanted to share. So thank you so much for watching my video. Please like, comment your experience or anything you want to share. Subscribe. It uh, will help me out a lot. I think I'm like pretty confident I'm going to reach my thousand subscribers this year. Lately it's like been growing a lot quicker but it's due to my shorts so not about my <laughs> videos but I think the more I share the more I'll reach the right audience and um And then as for the hours, I mean, we'll see. <laughs> I'm not like looking to make big mu bu <laughs> big bucks. I'm not expecting to like become a millionaire or anything crazy. It's just that um, being a disabled person, working on calls, struggling, it would be really nice to be able to like just pay, like have a little tiny extra spending money that's not the main motivation because like I said before if it was I would have quit a long time ago because I'm not I just know if it was all about money I wouldn't be doing it because I just know I'm not gonna get to that level of success to make to have it as like my one and only income but that's not what I'm doing it for it's just that if I can happen to make my um if I like can happen to make my like get bare minimum and it's just giving me like a little extra money a month that would be pretty cool because it's really tough being a disabled person both physically and mentally it's really tough having four animals to support without help and it's tough feeling like a financial burden when I do have to get help. So I'd really like to be able to improve my life and I do intend to work full time one day. It's just that with the career I chose, I'm starting from the bottom and hopefully working my way up. So it's going to take time. It's going to be a struggle, but it's going to be worth it. <laughs>